In today's video I'm going to cover all the basics of the Unity game engine in just 10 minutes by taking you through all the basics step by step. Are you ready? Let's get started. Unity is a powerful game development engine used by millions of developers around the world. Cuphead, Hollow Knight and even Hearthstone are just a few of the games developed using the Unity game engine. For installation take a look into my video tutorials for Windows and Mac both linked in the video description. Once you have Unity installed, open Unity Hub for your first step. To get started in Unity, you need to create a new project. And Unity will let you choose a project template. This template simply determines some initial settings for your project, such as whether it's for 2D or 3D. It's important to note that this choice isn't set in stone. You can switch between 2D and 3D later if you need to. For now, just let's select the 3D template and click on Create Project to get started. Once the project has been opened, you will see the Unity Editor. This is your workspace and is separated into several panels. The project, the hierarchy, the scene view and the inspector panel. All of those panels are there to make creating your games easier. In the project panel, you can see all your project files and assets, like sprites, animations, scripts and everything else that is included in your project. The hierarchy panel is like a list of all objects in your current scene. And the scene is like a container that holds the objects it contains together. The scene view panel is where you build and position the objects from your hierarchy panel in your 3D game world. Here you can also switch to the game view panel, which is like looking through a window to see how your game will actually play. The inspector panel is where you can view and change the details of any object in your hierarchy panel, such as its size, color or behavior. Now that we have an overview of the Unity Editor interface, we can learn more about the objects in the hierarchy panel, the game objects. In Unity, game objects are like the building blocks of your game. They can be characters, items, lights or even hidden things that make your game work in the background. All of these things are game objects. And each game object has a position in the scene, a rotation and a scale. And the most important thing that differs a character game object from a camera game object are the components that are attached to the game object. But what is a component? Components attach a specific ability or property to your game objects. They can make a game object move, change the color of the object or add physics to make an object fall down by gravity. To give you a better understanding we will create a simple game object in our current scene. To create a game object, we just right click in the hierarchy panel, select create empty and now we already created an empty object. When selected, we can see the position, rotation and scale that this empty game object has in the inspector panel. Besides an empty game object, we can also create an advanced game object that already has some components attached to it. For example, we can create a cube game object. The cube game object is just a game object with some additional components that will display a cube in our scene. But before we start manipulating this game object, let us take a quick look at how we can navigate in our scene view. To easily move around in your scene view, you can hold down the right mouse button. Now you can look around by moving your mouse and move by clicking your WASD keys on your keyboard just like you would in a video game. To fly up and down, just use the Q and E key on your keyboard. If you want to navigate to a specific game object, just double click on the object in your hierarchy panel or select the object and press the F key on your keyboard. Now let us manipulate our cube game object. To manipulate the cube game object, you first have to make sure that it is selected in your hierarchy panel to let the inspector panel know which game object you want to edit. With a transform component up here in the inspector, you can move, rotate and scale your objects. Simple, right? You can also edit these values in your scene view. If you want to move the object inside your scene, make sure you have selected the move tool right here and then you will be able to move the object around on the X, Y and Z axis using the colored arrows. As you move your cube in the scene, you will see the position values change in the inspector. With the different tools here in the scene view, you can also edit the rotation and scale of your cube. Next we will talk about cameras. Cameras in Unity are like the eyes of the players in your game. They determine what the player will see and you can place and control them to change what the player sees of your scene. In our scene there is already a camera game object. This is why we can see the cube in our game view. Without the camera object we would see nothing. 
Now let us take a look at the materials and shaders. Materials and shaders are like clothing for your game objects. Materials are the fabric, color and texture of clothing. They determine how an object looks. For example, you can have a material that makes an object look like it's made of wood, metal or glass. Shaders, on the other hand, determine how the material interacts with light and control how it appears in different situations. Shaders can make an object look shiny, dull or even transparent. Now let's talk about lights. Lights in Unity act like the sun or lamps in the real world. They make your game world visible by illuminating objects. You can place and configure lights to create different moods and atmospheres in your game, just like adjusting the lighting in a room to create the right ambience. So even if we have a camera game object in our scene, without any light we would only see darkness. Now let us learn how to start a game and do it for the first time. Running your game in Unity is as easy as hitting the play button right here. It allows you to test and experience what you've created. But be careful and always remember any changes you make while in play mode are like trying out ideas. When you leave the play mode, those changes go back to the previous state. Just like hitting reset on a video game to start over. This includes any new game objects added to the scene and any changes in your inspector panel. So be creative and experiment in play mode. But if you want to make consistent changes to your scene, be sure to exit play mode first. Now let's talk about physics and colliders. Physics in Unity are like the rules that define how objects move and interact in your game. Colliders on the other hand are like invisible boundaries that help to identifying when objects touch or collide with each other. When objects collide, it's physics that determines how they react, whether it's bouncing, sliding or stopping. So colliders help track collisions and physics dictate how objects behave when they collide or apply specific behaviors to game objects such as gravity. To add some realistic physics to a game object, you can use the rigid body component which makes game objects subject to forces like gravity and collide with other objects. If we apply the rigid body component to our cube and start the game again, we can see our cube falling down by gravity as long as the use gravity checkbox in the rigid body component is checked. Next we take a look at prefabs. In Unity, think of prefabs as blueprints for your game objects. Just as a blueprint for a house can be used to build many identical houses, prefabs allow you to efficiently create and reuse game objects by using the same design and state over and over again. And changes you make to a prefab affect all objects built with that prefab. This is a huge time saver through reusability and consistency. To create a prefab, simply drag and drop a game object into your project panel. Unity has now created a prefab out of your game object. It's also much easier to dynamically create objects with code when using prefabs. So prefabs provide both efficiency and programmable flexibility in Unity game development. Which brings us to the next topic, scripts. Scripts in Unity are the code you write to do almost anything you want. Scripts can be applied to game objects as script components. Learning to code and write scripts in Unity is such a powerful skill because scripting breaks all boundaries and limitations. You can create anything you want by developing new features, logic, tools and anything else you need for your game. For example, in my last devlog I created an authentication script that handles a login functionality for my game to log in with a player account. In the next step we want to build our game so everyone can play it. Creating a standalone build in Unity is like creating a finished game package. It allows you to share your game as a standalone application that others can play without needing Unity. It's like baking a cake and giving it to someone so they can enjoy it without knowing how it was made. This is what you get when you play games like Hearthstone or Cuphead. These games have been created and built with Unity into a standalone build so you can play them. To build a finished game, just click on File and Build Settings. Here you can select the scenes you want to include in your build, change the build settings and select the platform you want to publish your game on. We will select our example scene, choose the Windows, Mac, Linux platform selection and click Build and Run. We create a new folder where we want to save our game and now our game will be built into a standalone application. Once the process is complete, our game will open. 
That's it for today. Now you know all the Unity basics and you're on the best way to becoming a game developer. But remember, this is just the beginning. If you want to dive deeper and learn how to code in Unity with c -sharp, make sure to check out the next video, where I will give you a super fast wrap up of everything you need to know to start coding script components on your own with no prior knowledge. It's the key to unlocking limitless creative possibilities in your game development journey. So check out the next video and get ready to code to bring your game ideas to life.